Hey there, how's it going everybody? Dan here with PlantAbundance.com. Just want to give you an update on the hugel culture I got growing back here that I've been documenting on the channel. I've got three examples now to share with you. One bed is approximately a year and a half old. I've got another that's three years old and a third that's four years old. And as time goes by, it seems that as the organic material that was used to build up the bed breaks down, the beds become more and more abundant and require less inputs um, of any sort from myself. So. Now I just want to share with you what I've got growing on the mounds, and I'll, I guess I'll do it in order of age. So this here is the youngest of the three mounds. I put it together back in December of 2014 and planted it out in spring of 2015. I actually got really good results for the first year. Everything is just growing very abundantly on this mound. I've got things like Egyptian walking onions around the base, Here's also some Jerusalem artichoke or sunchoke that came up from a previous harvest. I've got this big sprawling cherry tomato and the cherry tomatoes that are growing on here are rather large. It's really good to see. And this sunchoke and then the yacon that's growing on the other side are kind of containing this tomato plant to the hugel culture by trellising it up a bit, as you can see over here. On the base over here, I've got some pepper. I've got a whole bunch of fava bean. A lot of this is now really close to being harvested. I grew this out for seed. This was the stone ear variety that I got out of rareseeds.com. It was harvested by Joseph and Patrick Simcox in uh, Peru so it's very rare so I'm looking forward to now propagating more and more of these plants see I got the chrysanthemum back there nice perennial beautifying plant beneficial insect attractor crawling all over the top of the mound got this kabocha squash I've got these on all three of the hugel cultures this is a great squash to grow very prolific it's a winter variety, so it sprawls out. It does a great job shading out the mound throughout the hot summer months. Here I've got a basil. Right towards the end of this mound, I've been piling up different uh, debris that I've collected through the garden, so I still need to plant something fresh here. I pulled out an old kale plant. See the kabocha growing all the way to the end there. So the squash will just kind of cover that up and make it nice and full looking. Got a couple dahlias coming up here at the base. I've got a bell pepper growing on this side. And what I've been doing is I've been kind of filling in any gaps that appear with um, plants that I had started that maybe didn't make it to the garden. And I just take that potting mix and fill in gaps around the plants. And that just helps to add some nutrition and some loamy matter to the hugel culture. And you can see the squash here is putting off a bunch of flowers which are edible. So I'm having great results with this mound. I've given it a little bit of water and I've talked about this in the past. The ultimate goal would be a no watering system, but realistically, um, just having a minimal garden, uh, watering system is probably what most people should target. And if there comes a time where you're unable to water, try to establish plants that'll still be able to survive in that situation. And um, I think as years go by, though, there may be a, a point in time where I do no watering at all. We'll, we'll just have to see how that goes. So here's two different hugel cultures. The one on the left is a three-year-old mound. And if you watched or been following along the videos, you saw how I did my annual hugel culture maintenance and planting of the beds. And you can see how well it's worked out. What I'll often do in the case of this bed where it had a lot of wood chip and and wood more so than any compost or soil mixed in i needed to allow more and more years of breakdown to really get this to a point where it's really suitable for growing your plants and so what i'll do in that case and i've done this successfully for a few years now you can see that kabocha squash there beautiful is i'll plant vining crops at the base of the hugel culture and allow them to crawl up and over the mound which is really nice. It's, it keeps them off the ground. It keeps the plants that are planted directly on the top of the hugel culture um, cooler 
more shaded and retains more moisture into the mound. So I really like this technique. Once again, I've got things like Egyptian walking onions around the base. I actually planted quite a few plants around the base and not, not all of them made it. But here I've got another uh, chrysanthemum, a perennial flower. Uh, the flowers are actually edible on those. You can see these beautiful calabash gourd flowers. They bloom at night, so they're just opening up now. During the day, they close up tight. And the younger gourds are eaten and prepared similar to squash, and the older gourds can be dried and hollowed out and used to make things like birdhouses and water bottles, all sorts of fun stuff. Here I've got a purple tree collard coming up, planted right on the top there. Another chrysanthemum. This purple tree collard is growing pretty much at the base. So when growing things like the tree collard at the base of the hugel culture, I like this technique because after a couple years, you could take a bunch of cuttings off of this. And if you're not worried about losing the plant, you can just kind of bend it over the mound, pin it down with some other sticks. And this is gonna add a lot of strength and organic matter to the mound. So right behind that, we've got the Armenian cucumber, one of my favorite annuals to grow and we're already getting some little baby cucumbers coming on here and this is planted right on top and it's starting to fill up the gaps like this end here nothing's going to grow on top because it's predominantly still just wood chips but these are cucumbers are going to grow right over that and cover it and i also got things like comfrey around the base here there's a snap pea be harvesting the seeds from that soon. And next we got the four-year hugel culture. You can see we, again we got the kabocha squash growing all around here, lots of squash. Now my wife's Filipino and she's talking about harvesting these while they're still green and she's got a particular dish she likes to make with the green kabocha squash so maybe I can film a little bit of that and share it with you guys. I'm excited to give that a try. And back over here, you can see the Moringa, the perennial Moringa, coming back for the third year now. I've got like about four or five different shoots popping up. And it's still partly shaded back here with all this growing around it, but that's how I wanted it. I don't want to stress it out while it's young right now. Here's a Ceanothus. I'm trying this out for the first time. It looks like it's doing pretty well. Another chrysanthemum. Got things like peppers and some more fava bean. And this is all kabocha squash vine. Back here we got another experimental merit collard cutting that was flowering and waiting to see what that does. Nice kabocha squash behind it. Here's a mugwort. I'll be doing future videos talking more about this amazing perennial. And some more basil back here. Got a purple jalapeno. And these are some older tree collards that are just kind of filling out the end here. As we walk to the other side. I've got some amaranth planted over here. Got some spaghetti squash coming out here. This was planted by chopping up a harvested spaghetti squash from the year prior and just burying it in the ground. I made a video called Grow Some Food if you want to check that out. And behind that we got potatoes I've been mounding up and I've mounded it up about as much as I am going to mound up so now it's starting to flower. We got some yokon here. We got Bocking 14 Comfrey, several plants growing. More Egyptian walking onions. More Merit Collard. This 
So as long as we're on the topic of hugel culture, I'll go ahead and try to answer a question that's come through several times on the channel through the years. People are interested in knowing um, if I'm concerned or if I have any issues with nitrogen being tied up in these hugel culture mounds. And so my answer is this. In the case of the very first mound that I built, I built it a year prior to actually planting anything in it. And that was to account for any breakdown that was going to occur. I also didn't use fresh wood when I built up the hugel culture, but I used wood that was already sitting around for a good year. So it was already decaying. And once you've got the wood decaying rather than uh, fresh cut wood, a lot of that tied up nitrogen ends up leaching back into the mound. So it's just a temporary thing. It's not a nitrogen deficiency that's being created, but rather nitrogen being tied up during that decaying process. So the way that you can get around ever having to deal with nitrogen tie up is by using older decaying wood rather than fresh cut wood. And if you do use fresh cut wood to build your mounds, which I have done and I add fresh wood in from time to time, you're going to want to allow those mounds or those areas of the mound a little bit more time to decompose before planting directly in that spot. But there's really no concern as far as uh, depleting nitrogen. You're not going to want to mix wood chips or anything in with the soil. That's going to really tie up all the nitrogen. But if you just layer wood chips on the top of your hugel culture, that's going to work more like a skin and it's not going to uh, tie up the nitrogen that's in the soil beneath it. Now the larger chunks of wood like you see here, it's going to be much better to use wood that's been decaying for a year or two or even more before adding those in your hugel culture. But that chunk of wood right there came from a large tree that was growing over in that area of the yard. And I took it out and I put an avocado tree over there now. So this mound here does have a lot of fresh wood in it and it's still doing just fine. So I hope that answers the question on nitrogen deficiency in hugel culture mounds. I've had no issues with it. Um, like I said, the longer that these hugel cultures are around, the more abundantly you're going to be able to grow on them as things break down. That's the ultimate goal is having a nice uh, sponge-like hugel culture mound. And that takes years to accomplish, but there's nothing to it but to do it. And with that, I hope this video finds you and finds you well. Having a great evening and a great weekend. Take care, everybody. I'll be talking to you again soon.